بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الأبي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفهم وأكرمني من نور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين Um, Alhamdulillah, we are able to have another session on Imam and Wilaya. As you remember, we were talking about the hadith that indicate the necessity of referring to Ahlul Bayt. We discussed the need uh, for ref referring to Ahlul Bayt salam, based on hadith of Saqalain, hadith of Safina, hadith of Hitta, the gate of Hitta. And now uh, we want to discuss uh, the hadith of the stars. And Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma qal qal rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because this is from Sunni source so there is no wa'alihi. Al-nujumu amanun l-ahl l-ard من الغرق stars help prevent the inhabitants of the earth from being drowned so when people travel uh, like uh, sailors you know when they travel they need to find out direction so they use stars so rasulullah is likening ahlul bayt to stars and nujumu amanun la ahl al ard min al gharaq wa ahl bayti amanun la ummati min al ikhtilaf so the stars help inhabitants of the earth from being droned help them to prevent to avoid that and my Ahlul Bayt are the protectors of my community against disputes and division which means in religious matters then Rasulullah said according to this hadith فَإِذَا خَالَفَتْهَا قَبِيلَةٌ مِنَ الْعَرَبِ اختلفوا فصاروا حزب ابليس whichever groups among the arabs oppose my ahlul bayt shall be split up by dissension and will become a party of satan so no one should oppose them or fight them or reject them otherwise they will go to further division and they will become a party of Iblis. This hadith I have quoted from Mustadrak of Hakim Neshaburi, volume 3, page 162, in the book of Ma'rifatu Sahab. So in the Mustadrak, which is Mustadrak al Sahihain. Hakim and Ishaburi brings hadith which are not mentioned in Sahih Muslim and Sahih Bukhari and there is a section in this book on knowing Sahaba, the companions about their merits so you find this hadith there and it is number 4715 Hakim Neshaburi quotes this hadith from Ibn Abbas And then we have also Ibn Hajar who in as sawaiq al muhraqa volume 2, page 546, quotes this from Salmat ibn Akwa. Very similar. So I mentioned for you the one that Hakim in Ishaburi quotes from Ibn Abbas, from the Prophet. Now I'm quoting what Ibn Hajar quotes from Salmat ibn Akwa 
from the Prophet. An Salmat ibn al Akwa' an al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal an Nujumu amanun la ahl al Sama wa ahl bayti amanun la ummati. This hadith is very similar, but it says the stars are also protection for the people of the sky. So it's either a matter of, for example, uh, inhabitants of the sky benefiting from the stars, or maybe there was a miss uh, um, writing in the hadith when Ibn Hajar or people from whom Ibn Hajar has received have mentioned. Because in the first one says, Amanul Ahl al Art. In any case, what is important and is common is Ahlul Bayt are for my Ummah, for my nation, necessary. And they have to follow them and refer to them. I also have given more references in the footnote after these uh, quotations. And for example, in Zakhairul uh, Uqba by Tabari, and also in Fada'il al Sahaba by Abu Abdullah ibn Hanbal, you can find these uh, hadith. Also, for Shia sources, you can refer to Oyunu Akhbar al Rada and also to uh, Amali by Sheikh Tulsi. Uh, the page numbers are all in the book, inshallah, you will see. So, you not only have an option of referring to Ahlul Bayt, but you actually must refer to Ahlul Bayt. Otherwise, you would not be able to find the right direction. And as people who would be droned in the sea, they would... Uh, lose their physical life, those who would not follow Ahlul Bayt would be droned in darkness, in confusion, in division, and they would lose their uh, spiritual life. Okay, now we can finish this chapter and move on to the next chapter, chapter 4, which is about the roles of an Imam. So, so far what we have done, we have talked about the principle of Imama and then we focus on Ahlul Bayt and wanted to say that even if someone doesn't believe in Imama as the Shia believe, at least they can refer to Ahlul Bayt as the people who have authority in teaching Islam after the Prophet But now we want to go further and say uh, in addition to authority in teaching Islam, they have leadership position as well. Therefore, we start with uh, discussing roles of an imam. Roles of an imam cannot be understood unless we understand the roles and tasks of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and we know that imam is successor to the Prophet. Therefore, we have to know what was the Prophet supposed to do and what now his successor has to do. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had many tasks, but some of his major tasks that relate to our discussion here is to present Islam. So the Prophet was to present Islam. And this was through receiving revelation and then reading that revelation to people, communicating that revelation to people, teaching it, explaining it, and also exemplifying it in his own practice in his own life 
because prophet was not just someone to teach theories he himself was an embodiment of the message he was a role model a perfect role model so this is one task of the prophet teaching islam in an infallible way and it involved receiving revelation the second task of the prophet sallallahu was to judge among the people because as we know in islam no one has a right to judge among people and force his judgment on people unless he has authority from god or people themselves have agreed if god gives authority to someone to judge that's fine if two people two parties conflicting parties who have dispute they also agree on what we call qadi at tahkim to have a kind of uh, third party who would be looking into the case and they say we are happy with your judgment so basically they themselves voluntarily accept his decision so unless we have someone who has got, received authority from God or we have agreement of the parties involved so no one else can say I am the judge and you have to listen to me if they don't agree they don't need to listen so this is why when there was unjust uh, government unjust caliphs uh, the followers of Ahlul Bayt were asked not to refer to those judges appointed by some say for example uh, Yazid or Harun or Rashid or Ma'moon and this type of people because they had no authority to appoint judges and people were not happy with those judges as a kind of qadiyya tahkim to do arbitration so Rasulullah had the task of judging among people and Allah says actually a sign of the believers is that whenever they have a dispute they take it to Rasulullah and he would judge and then they should be fully happy with that فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا by your Lord they don't believe means they are not considered as believers unless they ask you to be the judge between them and then they would not find any unease any difficulty in what you judge and then they are submissive they are very happy and pleased so this is the second task of the prophet the third was to implement divine laws to lead a society for muslim population because people were muslims they wanted islamic state they wanted islamic ideals and values to be implemented so the prophet not only was a teacher but was also a person who actually undertook the responsibility of implementing those laws and values so rasulullah became a head of state first he was head of a community then when all members of the state almost all uh, became muslims in medina then they had a kind of city state and then it expanded to all arab peninsula 
So the idea is, if possible, if agreeable to all members of a city or a state, then they need someone to undertake the responsibility of implementing these laws. So three major tasks of the Prophet in this discussion that we want to discuss are presenting Islam in an infallible way, in theory and practice, in his words and in his deeds and actually character, second to be a judge and third to be a leader and exercise socio-political leadership. After the Prophet wasallam, for sure many of these tasks still remain. We need a society, we need a role model, we need a judge. We cannot say after the Prophet there is no dispute. People don't need any judge. After the Prophet, people don't need leader. Everyone would uh, act pro perfectly and there would be no need for ruler or leader. There would be no anarchy. Or everyone would do everything perfectly. We don't need, you know, someone who has spirituality and religious knowledge to run. We leave it to other people. Or we say Islam has nothing to do about the society and politics. None of these are accepted. All Muslims actually, apart from Khawarij as we said before, they say we need someone to have comprehensive leadership in worldly affairs and in the religious affairs. Imam for them, for Muslim theologians, whether it be Sunni, Shia, is ra'asatun ammah fi umur al-deen wa dunya So we need someone to be our leader. Yes, the only thing that we have to remember always is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam died and with his death coming of revelation stopped. So the demise of the Prophet marked a stopping of revelation. No one's death had this meaning and this requirement. It's the Prophet's demise that marked the end of revelation. This means that after the Prophet, we would not have anyone who would receive revelation, but this doesn't mean that we would not have anyone who would have infallible understanding of Islam who would have God given knowledge to present Islam in an infallible way. No, we still can have someone who has this unconventional knowledge, God given knowledge, who is masoom, who presents Islam perfectly, who teaches Islam in his words and his practice and character, but he's not receiving revelation. So he uh, follows in the same framework that the revelation to the Prophet created. He would also be judging or appointing judges, because we need to have judges. And also, he would exercise socio-political leadership as much as people are asking and are prepared. He would not impose himself. He would be available for people. And as Amir al-Mu'min alayhi salam said in Nahjul Balaqi, لو لا حضور الحاضر وقيام الحجة بوجود الناصر وما أخذ الله على العلماء ألا يقار على كذة ظالم ولا سغب مظلوم لألقيت حبلها على غاربها ولسقيت آخرها بكأس أولها وَلَا أَلْفَيْتُمْ دُنْيَاكُمْ هَذِهِ أَزْهَدَ عِنْدِي مَنْ عَفْتَةَ عَنْزَدْ Had it not been that Hujjah is completed. How? Because there is حُضُورُ hadir. There are so many people. You know, they went so much to 
pressurize Imam Ali alayhi salam that in khutbe shakshariya he says hatta laqad wuta al hasanan Imam Hasan and Imam Hussein who were two strong men they were not children at that time they were strong men they were you know like pressed by people they people went on the, maybe their back or you know shoulder so much people went to Amirul Mu'minin to request him by actually force that he must accept to become Khalifa after the third Khalifa uh, died or was killed in any case Amirul Mu'minin says there is Hudur al hadir and Qiyam al hujjah bi wujud al nasr because I have helpers so Hujja is complete I have no excuse because Allah has a covenant with ulama that they should not be indifferent when some people are dying out of hunger and some are dying because they have eaten too much otherwise you would have found that I have no interest in your leadership and in your whole world and it would be for me less valuable than water which comes from the nose of a goat which is something that even you don't like to think about it. So Amir said, dunya for me is even less valuable than this. So Imam definitely has the job of presenting Islam, being a standard bearing, being a role model, helping people with their purification, helping them in their journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has authority to judge. He has authority to rule. But when it comes to judging and ruling, if people don't go to them, they are not going to force people. And they are not going to go after people and, you know, uh, saying that you must come to us. We have hadith uh, in our uh, major collections of hadith that says um, the example of Imam is the, like the example of Kaaba that you should go to him not that wait for imam to come to you so it means that imams have the authority but people should appreciate and go and invite them to take this position of leadership socio-political leadership okay this is the core of this lesson and inshallah you will read this book when you receive it and there is also a reference to uh, the verse 26 of chapter 38 about prophet Dawood alayhi salam and allah says ya Dawood, inna ja'alna ka khalifatan fil ard fahkum bayna an-nas bil haqq wa la tattabi' al-hawa fa yudhillaka an O oh, Dawood, we have made you Khalifa, vicegerent of, vicegerent of God on the earth, and Fahkum Bainal Nasbira. Judge among the people or rule among the people, but Bilhaq, with full observation of the truth. And do not follow whims and uh, appetites, otherwise, they will take you away from the path of God. So this shows that those who are Khalifatullah, they have authority to lead and judge. And this is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and therefore can be effective and people should accept it. If it doesn't come from Allah and if people do not volunteer, then no one has authority to impose his judgment or leadership on people okay i stop here inshallah we continue next week wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allahumma salli ala